Hey everybody, it's Jason Waha here and I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit today about combining two different exercises uh, for more muscle growth. So this is a concept that I, I think most people can get behind, most people understand. It was lost a little bit in the translation and uh, popular lifting culture online. Uh, you know, around a decade ago with some of the minimalist stuff and starting strength and everything. Um, and I was partially in that wave other than I put out programs similar that through isolation work in. So not really, right? Because I had everyone still doing curls and tricep extensions and so on and so forth in addition to these big movements. And this is in a way keeping with understanding that theme that we know based upon both observing anecdote for decades as well as some stuff found in the lab that muscles generally respond better if they're worked from two different angles, okay? We know that. that. That is, the data has found that. So people say, well, what do you mean? I can't just do, you know, 10 sets of an exercise. It's like, well, no. Technically, when you look at the data, we've generally seen that if you do the same amount of total volume with two or more exercises that work the muscle a bit differently, it grows a little bit more. Now, are we talking a night and day difference? Like, are we standing here saying, oh, it's going to double your gains? No, we're talking a very, very small amount. But here's, here's the thing I'm going to point out. All right. Now, some people say, well, I just don't have time to change to a different exercise. But I don't want to do flat and incline bench. i got to set them both up. Or you don't even need to warm up on both. You already warmed up on one. But I digress. If you're already going to come in and do six sets, you're already going to put in the work. You, you see where we're going here? It makes sense to work two different angles. And if we're going to do relatively low volumes, it makes sense to work two very different angles. In other words, you know, I could make a case for doing flat dumbbell bench and flat barbell. Sure. I think we, we could very much make a case for that. But if you're going to do really low volumes, like let's say you're only going to do six total sets a week. All right, those are fairly similar in their angle. Whereas if you throw an incline in, it's quite a bit different. It is more different than the two flats. Okay, it is more different. So if that is what's going on, then it makes sense to do that. And that's what I'm, I'm advocating now. Could it be a compound in an isolation? You bet it could. In fact, that is a really good way to go also. It's a really good way to go also. But, uh, I mean, a perfect example, incline and a flat bench. Those are quite a bit different angles. They complement each other really well for chest development. All right, what about, you just saw there, deadlift and a glute bridge. Both really big, heavy movements, but do they complement each other? Do they complement each other? And I think the answer is yes, right? One of them is a, is a hip hinge, a little bit more length in position, not really because this is a big exercise. Maybe if it was a Romanian deadlift, okay, all right, for the glutes. Because again, obviously glutes, hamstrings, all those muscles are involved, but if we're gonna talk individual muscles. Whereas in the glutes on the glute bridge, it's a shortened position exercise. It's on the other end of the spectrum terms of the strength curve, uh, where the tension is, right? Does that complement each other extremely well? The answer is obviously yes, okay? They complement each other because they work on such vastly different angles. Is that a good way to build big glutes? When you start throwing in a squat or a leg press, you're really good. But that's kind of what we're looking at. Are we hitting a muscle from different angles? Are we working different heads? Are we working either a lengthened or a shortened position? Right, this is what we need to be looking at. So that I gave you an example there. Same thing here, we have tricep extensions. All right, beautiful example. These inclined tricep extensions work the triceps very differently than a press does. In fact, we know from studies, we know from, from biomechanics that it recruits different. We know from the literal studies that extensions like this grow the long head more and the lateral head less than a bench press. When they're combined together, see what we're saying? They both grow all three heads, but it's biased. Those different angles, they matter. 
Same thing with that, that flat bench. Flat bench is a great overall chest builder and kind of work the upper with a, with a larger bias. And then some of the pec minor more. Okay, working that chest from two different angles. Now with the tricep example there, what we're seeing is you're working the triceps. Two different heads are getting the bias. Again, this maximizes growth. All right, same thing. You see the pull-ups. So we can we can throw this right into curls. I'm going to do a bunch of curls at the end. But we'll, we'll discuss the lat side first. Vertical pull versus a horizontal pull in terms of lats, traps, all those things. That's vastly different angles. Do they complement each other? They work different regions of the lat slightly differently, yes. Do they bias the upper back one on the other versus the other? Yeah, the chins will work the middle back, the lats more, and the upper back a little bit less than the rows. Rows will work the lats at some different insertion points. They'll work the upper back a little bit more. All right, then we get over into the same thing. Those chin-ups are a good compound for the biceps. But we could also combine it with an isolation, do a nice strict curl like this. And then we could get even more nuance. So you're going to see me through this video doing three types of curls. This is like, let's say you have a muscle that really needs specialization. For me, my arms in general um, have tended to lag a little bit behind other muscle groups. Most people realize this, right? I always need a little more arm work. So with something like arms, biceps, can we stand here and say, hey, can we work three different? Can we take a nice big strict curl? Works the whole thing. But then what about these shortened position, length of position, upper, lower? Okay, these completely different stretch positions, right? An incline curl and a preacher curl, vastly different angles. Your shoulders are exact opposite angles. Why? Look at the, the in, incline curl. Because keep in mind, your bicep inserts into the shoulder, and one of the heads is partially responsible for that movement of the shoulder. So we're at a stretch to where your arms are completely behind you and you're stretched at the bottom. Okay, so we have that. But then with the preacher curl, we're in the opposite shoulder position, also going into that stretch position. Hey, we're working these different angles. By doing this, even if we're going to do the same amount of training, the same amount of volume, okay? Where does that put us? Right where we want to be, we're hitting all these angles. This is a great way to grow. Great way to grow. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.